When styling web pages with cascading style sheets, it is very important to be able to precisely control what parts of the page you are affecting. Although it is impressive that you can select all paragraphs with a single p-selector, it is not always desirable. For example, you might be styling a frequently asked questions page and want to style the question paragraphs differently from the answer paragraphs. These kind of situations are actually very common. In this movie tutorial, we'll focus on the use of IDs and classes, which are HTML attributes, to solve these kinds of issues. We'll begin with the Coffeehouse website that's displaying in the browser. Although more style is needed, CSS is already being used to style all of the site's pages in a consistent manner. Note that the navigation bar is a paragraph, but it is somehow styled differently from other paragraphs. Further, the copyright paragraph needs unique formatting too. We're going to examine how to accomplish this. Now let's navigate to the entertainment page. The entertainment page has a data table that is in need of some style. The coffees page also has a table in need of similar style. There might be other tables in the site, however, that we don't want to style in that same fashion, so we'll keep that in mind. The entertainment page is going to be the focus of some of our work, so let's use our usual view source technique to open that page, entertainment.htm, in our editor. First, we notice that there are two link tags. Sometimes it is helpful to organize styles into more than one stylesheet file. The first link tag links to basic.css, a stylesheet that contains some general basic page styles. Let's take a quick look at it. Viewing basic.css in the editor, you can see there are some basic body styles, table related styles, heading styles, link styles, and horizontal rule styles. But note that these link styles affect just the individual links themselves. The placement and background color of the overall navigation bar that we saw in the browser are applied in the second style sheet file, detail.css, which we'll be working with later. Okay, let's return to our entertainment pages HTML. The second link tag is for that detail.css style sheet. Next, let's locate the HTML for the navigation bar paragraph that has the unique paragraph styling. Looking within its opening p tag, notice its id equal nav attribute. This is the key to it all. By giving the paragraph a unique name, we can refer to it in our style sheet to uniquely format it. The reason I use an id here instead of a class is that I know there will never be two navigation bars on the same page needing this same styling. If we needed two or more identical looking nav bars on a page, we'd use a class instead and assign these nav bars the same class name. To see how the ID nav bar was styled, let's look within detail.css, the second style sheet. Notice how we were able to select that navigation bar paragraph that has the ID of nav. The selector begins with a pound sign, followed by nav to match the ID. It then sets the background color, margin, and padding that we saw earlier in the browser. So the pound sign is how you apply a style rule to an HTML tag that has an ID. Now let's see if we can apply that same ID technique to the copyright section of these pages. To do so, we'll return to the entertainment pages HTML. Moving down to the copyright area, we notice that it too is a paragraph. Since there will never be more than one copyright section on any page, let's give it an ID and call it copyright. With that in place, we'll save. Let's return to our detail style sheet so we can write a rule that styles our copyright paragraph. As our selector, we'll use pound copyright and then apply CSS properties to de-emphasize that part of the page. We'll give it a light brown color of pound AA8866. A smaller font size of 80% and center align it to match the alignment of the HR above it. Now let's save the style sheet, return to the browser, refresh, and then examine our entertainment page's newly styled copyright section. As you can see, it has been effectively de-emphasized and Notice that no other paragraphs on this page have been affected. And if we navigate to other pages, 
Notice that their copyright areas are also picking up our new styles. That's not magic. That's because these other starter pages had IDs placed on their copyright paragraphs previously. Only the entertainment page was missing its ID. With the copyright styling completed, let's turn our attention to tables. The entertainment page contains a four-row table. We would like to improve its readability by giving alternating rows a different background color and by putting a border around the outside of the table. To do so, let's return to the entertainment page in the editor and find the opening table tag. Here's a tip to guide your proper use of classes and IDs here. In this example, there might be other tables in the site, such as page layout tables, that require styling different from this data table. So we can't just write a rule here for all tables. We do need to use either a class or an ID. And since it is also possible that a page might contain more than one data table needing the same styling, we should use a class rather than an ID. Once that's decided, we'll choose a meaningful name, data table. This class will be used to set the table's border. We also want to give alternating background colors to the odd and even table rows. Since there's obviously more than one odd and even row, we'll use classes instead of IDs. So on the first row's TR tag, we'll insert class equal odd row. On the second row, class equal even row. On the third, class equal odd row. And on the fourth, class equal even row. When all of those are in place, we'll save. With all these table classes set up, let's return to our style sheet to write style rules for them. Recall that we use the pound sign for IDs, but here we'll use a dot or the period key on your keyboard for classes. So for our table border, we'll use dot data table with no spaces and set a border that is one pixel solid with a brown color shade of pound BB9966. Now for the odd and even row background colors. For dot odd row, we'll give a lighter background color of pound FFEEBD. And for dot even row, we'll give a slightly darker background color of pound F6E5B4. When these rules are complete, we'll save and return to the browser. Let's watch our table as we refresh. Notice that the table has the border around it and its rows have their alternating background colors, which serves to enhance the readability and also coordinates well with the rest of the page. As a bonus, let's navigate to the coffees page. Its table picks up these styles as well since the data table, odd row, and even row classes were part of the original starter files. In this manner, we have achieved consistent data table styling for our site. Although our detail style sheet appears to be working fine, it is still a good idea to validate your style rules. To do so, you can use the W3C's online CSS validation service shown here in the browser. You can find out more about CSS validation from the Intro to CSS movie tutorial located in the Cascading Style Sheets topic of this CSI training product.